Hey guys, this is Tara with Kittens, Weights, and Tarot, and today I want to introduce you guys to many bristle chinchweed, also known as Pectus peposa. This is something that grows in spades on my property up in the White Mountains, and it's an annual that actually can grow to about a foot or so. You might see this wonderful yellow flower uh, popping up around uh, June, July, and sometimes lasting all the way into October, and at the very, very latest, maybe into November. But you usually see these yellow flowers as a result of our summer monsoons that we have out here. It is a dominant species and it tends to carpet the landscape in a wonderful yellow color and it fills the air with this kind of earthy, lemony scent, which is just fabulous. If you're looking for many bristle chinchweed, you'll usually find it at an elevation of about 6,000 feet or below and usually found in dry desert areas or pinyon juniper areas such as where we live uh, chaparral communities, but it definitely loves the sun. You can see it's got that lovely solar plexus color, so it's definitely attuned to sun. And it can also be found on rocky hillsides, in mesas, uh, sandy and gravelly areas, and sometimes along roadsides. Now within the United States, where you might commonly see many bristle chinchweed is going to be found in Arizona, which is our home state, California, New Mexico, Nevada, Texas, and Utah. Although you can still find some of this in Baja California or Northern Mexico. Mini bristle chinchweed is important to our ecosystem. Why? Because it attracts hummingbirds, it attracts bees, butterflies, basically all of the pollinators. And that's something that we always want to bring in. But also it was used for the indigenous peoples of our area. It is said that the Havasupai used this for food, for porridge, for a sauce, and for a relish. So basically they parched the seeds of the Menebrisil chinchweed, they ground it up, and they could use it to make a mush. Um, also times you could take the plant itself, dip it into salt water, and just eat it as a um, kind of like as a condiment. The Pima, however, used this as a laxative. So they created a decoction, which is a, a kind of boiling of the plant in water over long periods of time, and they used it for that particular drug. So if you're looking to ingest mini bristle chinchweed in large quantities, expect it to have a laxative effect. The Zuni, however, love to use it as a carminative. So you're wondering what a carminative is. That's actually helping people that suffer from gas trip problems. So if you have a little bit of gas, uh, perhaps mini bristle chinchweed could be for you. But it's also used as an eye medicine, uh, especially those that are suffering from snow blindness. Now within their ceremonies, they used mini bristle chinchweed for a fragrance. So oftentimes both men and women would chew the blossoms and then spit it out onto the skin, rub it around, and all of a sudden you have this lovely lemony perfume scent. That's something that I find when I pick it up with my fingers. If you crush the flowers between your fingers and you smell them, it will smell like lemons, kind of like an earthy lemon. So not quite like lemon the fruit, but it's a very earthy lemony scent, which is just wonderful. You can also use this as a spice on your food. So I decided to experiment with this flower, with this herb, because there isn't a whole lot of information about it on the internet. So I did want to use it as a spice first. So I dried out some of the mini bristle chinchweed that I harvested, making sure not to over harvest from any one particular area. I put it on a little bit of pan fried zucchini. It was really good. Not really to the liking of my boyfriend, but I'm more of the person that loves lemon, lemony tasting things than he is. So I thought it came out pretty good. But I also wanted to see other ways that I could utilize this herb. So I created a chinchweed spray, which was just basically putting some hot water over chinchweed. I also am using it to create a sap. So right now I'm doing a oil infusion so using some of my sunflower oil and I'm having the chinchweed infuse into that oil so later on I can make a salve. 
magically speaking, for all my witchies out there, I have found that this really is attuned to the sun. It really is attuned to the solar plexus. And as I use the spray kind of around my altar or just various areas in my home, it's really good at cleansing and clearing. And I think because it does have that solar energy, it just kind of burns away any stagnant energy, anything that doesn't serve. So I am truly enjoying this herb and I'm going to be really ha sad to see it go when the winter sets in and the snow, but I'll be looking forward to seeing it next year. So anyway, you guys, I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about chinchweed. Like I said, there isn't a whole lot of information out there about it, so I hope you found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this with other people that you feel might benefit from this video. And I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. If you want to learn a little bit more about me, all of my information is down below. But I will catch you spiritual herby fellows later. All right, peace, love, and chicken grease. Peace out.